Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today what I'm going to do is color a page in my coloring book. This is the book that I have self-published. It's called Mermaid Summer Adult Coloring Book and it's by me, Sia Steelborn. This is my proof copy. You can see that right here there's a stripe that says not for sale and it really bothers me that it's covering up the title, which is annoying. At some point I will order a proper author copy of this. This is after I got this, I actually did a bunch of changes to the inside pages. So I'm going to color one of the pages, and I think I'm going to do this every now and then just to show you what you can do with this paperback. One of the first things that I have in here, so I do have a flip through of this on my channel, but that was when the book was completely empty before I had started using it. So I just filled out my This Book Belongs To page, is right here and then I have a title page I have all of the images at a glance there are 25 mermaids and mermaid scenes for you to color then I have a little introduction and I also have a test your materials page so what I've done here is I've tested all of the materials that I have at least most of them I did this in order to test the paper because I self published this through Amazon KDP so I had very little control over the paper, the weight of the paper, etc. And if you like to use coloring books, you know one of the most important things is the paper. So in order to counteract the fact that the paper is, you know, just regular thin paper, um, what I did was I put each of my designs on the right side and then the back of each of them is blank. So I wanted to see how this paper performs with all these different materials and how it bleeds through. And as you can see, this is my alcohol marker uh, section, and it did bleed through right here. So if that bothers you, um, that's what it does. But um, just remember that the back of the illustration is blank, so it's not going to ruin your next coloring page. So in here I also have a little how to draw a mermaid tutorial. I thought this would be cute to um, include. There's four steps. Oh, I just realized this says step four ink. <laughs> it should say step five. There's five steps. Oops, I'm sure, I've ch I'm sure that that's updated in the final copy. If it's not, I will fix it before this video even goes up. But anyway, and so then the illustrations start. So. I'm not going to go through every single one of them. I'm just going to show you the ones that I've colored so far. And if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen these already. I've done this one, and this is in normal color pencils, Staedtler color pencils. And then over the top, I did some white gel pen. So that's that one. And as you can see, the paper did okay with that. And then I also did this one, which is in Prismacolor Premier Pencils. And I think I did this with just Premier Pencils. I didn't do any white gel pen. I didn't do anything. And again, the paper handled it really well, really nicely. The last page that I've done so far is this one. And I really, really like how this turned out. I love the color scheme. I love her hair gradient. I love the the way her tail turned out. It's just so cute. Um, as you can see, the Copics blended pretty nicely. These are Copics and other alcohol markers. And so they did pretty well. They did not feather too much. I don't think they feathered at all, actually. And then the bleed through is quite substantial. You can see that there. There's a lot of bleed through. But again, as you can see, the back side of all of these is blank, so it's not going to ruin your next illustration. But make sure to add a spare piece of paper underneath because this is what happened. So I didn't put a second a spare piece of paper because I knew this was blank. So it did bleed through and damage the next page. So when you do use markers with this book, do and any book published through KDP, make sure to have a scrap piece of paper and um, put it at the back of this and just make sure that to protect that next illustration. Today what I'm going to use is my Derwent uh, watercolor pencils. 
<laughs> as you can see, they are very well loved. I really love these pencils. They are really good quality. They are really, they make beautiful colors. And I only have a 12 color set. And I think that that's all you really need. You don't really need much more because you can mix all the colors you need from the 12 colors. I also have this water brush that I will use to um, work with the watercolor pencils. I know Pentel makes really good ones, but this is another brand. I don't know if you can see it. It's called Kuritaki Co. LTE. LTD. <laughs> That's the brand. Um, it was just a random purchase in an art store made in Japan. Uh, let me just show you the sample page again. So here's watercolor pencils and what they look like um, fresh. And then this is watercolor pencils with some water added. And I have, um, I have noted that you don't really need a lot of water for watercolor pencils to do their thing. And also I believe if you use too much water, this paper will definitely buckle. So make sure to not use too much. And I actually see this didn't happen right away, but it did smudge quite a bit right there. So I'm going to be very, very careful and I'm going to grab a sheet of paper to put behind. And I just have to choose my illustration that I'm going to be doing today. So this is a nice, nice to have like an at a glance because you can see right away all of them and see which one you want to do. So I think I'm going to do this one. So why I chose this one is because I want to do like a nice gradient from yellow of the sunshine to the lighter blue to the darker blue of the deeper sea. That is the, the plan. Actually, you know what, I was debating whether I would, wanted to do watercolors. But maybe I do. Maybe I do want to do like this part of it, watercolors, and then this part in watercolor pencils. Um, yeah, maybe we'll do that. Now we're going to be living on the edge because I don't think this paper is going to be too happy with watercolors. I think experimenting is fun. So we're going to see how it'll go. This is a watercolor pan set that I made myself. Um, that's why it's so cracked. That's why it doesn't look so good. But anyway, we're going to see what we are going to do. I think I'm just going to use this pen, um, this brush, because it's very, dr like it's dry, like it's, it's wet, but it's dry. So I feel like it's going to be like, usually what you would do here is you would make, do the wet and wet technique and like wet all of this area maybe mask off some stuff and then do the gradient but because this paper is so thin i think we would just it would be kind of a bad idea to do that so let's do it a different way let's just make a gradient going this way with the water brush bit by bit whoops so bit by bit, use our palette, and uh, hope for the best. I'm trying not to squeeze too much water out of here, and it's already buckling. Oh, this is another um, element that I didn't really think about, but yeah, I suppose we also have to think about how this ink is going to, uh, the printed ink is going to react to the water. Yeah, okay, I think I need to s use a lot less water. I'm trying to do a gradient though, like, uh. I think it's actually the first time I'm using this palette properly. I can't blend too much because it's gonna turn gray. What I was going for here was like a current, um, so I suppose it can be blue too.
We're not gonna really see the colors of this until it dries. People ask sometimes like, oh, if you're not supposed to use the white, why does the white come with watercolors? And it's like, well, so I'll tell you why. Is because it's so that you can mix it with the other colors to make it make them lighter, have a different tone, make them more opaque, that sort of thing. Um, so that's why you have white in a wa in all watercolor palettes. You can also mix um, skin tones nicely with if you have white. So now I'm not going to use the white, and I'm just going to use. Well, actually, I think I did add a little bit of white. I'm gonna use more of this to make it like more saturated. What I love about um, paint and um, pencils as well is that, but mostly it's in the paint. It's mostly a paint thing that paint, you can have the smallest set possible you can have a set of six colors that's what we had in when i went to art school we got as a standard for kit we got um six colors so we had black white um red um, we had a big tube of, of white so we had what a red yellow and blue tubes and then a black tube and then a big tube of white and that's all we had and we could purchase more colors but they encouraged us to just use the colors that we were given because you can mix every single color with your base colors Now we're gonna make it dark. Make it dark. It's not the smoothest gradient in the world, is it? Uh, well, I really don't want this paper to break. I'm doing kind of like a semi wet and wet technique here. Oops. Those are two different colors. Ew, though. As you can see, I'm not very much of a perfectionist when it comes to coloring. Um, sometimes I'm a little more careful, but other times I'm like, eh, let's just have some happy accidents. Like, it's okay. If that's how it wants to be, that's fine. And we're here to relax, right? Like, a lot of people color as a meditation, as, you know, a creative release. And it's so much more fun when you just let things happen. And, like, it doesn't have to be a perfect picture. It can just be a lot of fun to, to color. And, you know, if the end result is beautiful then great but if it's not then like well at least you had fun along the way that's why i'm also using this big this like little bit of bigger brush and i'm just going to use this one brush because it's just faster <laughs> and easier like you can hold it a little further away to make it a finer point like i'm doing now you can push it uh, harder down to make it bigger. This is much more versatile than using like a little brush to try and get into every single nook and cranny and not go over the lines. What's the fun in that? Just do whatever you want. Look at that! It actually turned out quite nice. Like now that this is drying, you can see that yellow into light blue into dark blue. That's quite quite okay actually that's not too bad at all there's a couple of like blotches patches etc but you know what um it's okay
okay it's not bad it's not bad at all so i'm just gonna clean off <laughs> clean off my brush here a little bit and cap it off and then we'll move the watercolors to the side maybe i should do the seaweed also in watercolor yeah let's do that never mind bringing the colors back also i want her uh, thin to be like a little bit see-through what should i do should i make that effect in watercolor or should I wait until I do the... Uh, I think if I do it now, watercolor is going to be too wet. So For when I go back with the pencil. So let's put these to the side for real this time. I am now sitting on half of my chair because my cat decided that she wanted to sit in the chair. And I should just deal with it. Because that's where... She wants to sit. Okay, that's fine. We have let this dry a little bit. I'm, I was a little bit hesitant to draw, to draw on this when it was completely wet because as you can see, it's still, it's still a little bit wet, but it's dry enough that I don't feel like I'm gonna tear it if I start using my pencils, so. <laughs> Let's start, and I think, um, again, let's, uh, I'm just, I think I'm putting off the inevitable because I don't want to uh, mess up the mermaid, but um, let's start with like the bubbles and the fish and everything like that. this paper is probably best not wetted more than once because I know sometimes with watercolor pencils you color the base layer then you water over then you color again and then you like you do that a couple of times to kind of give the the impression that you're you know to give that illusion of depth I'm also going to touch up those messy edges here with a pencil. It's just easier with a pencil than with a brush. And just be very light to try and match the colors. You know it would be cool if we had more seaweed? This is the magic of watercolor pencils. You just have to be kind of careful of which direction you're stroking, especially when you have, when you're mixing two colors together. Again, I'm not pushing, because like right here it says push, I'm not even pushing, I'm just using the water that's already on the brush. I'm trying to give that illusion that like, so deep with the water is like there's like a bunch of seaweed like layers and layers of it in the background Accidentally did a great gradient there. Okay, so I think we need to do this mermaid now. And I don't know what color I want her hair to be. Although, mm, I think I 
think it should be blonde because we have the yellow and then the greens and all that. So I feel like if she's blonde, then she'll kind of like stand out from everything, the blue background and everything, but she'll still be within the same color family of everything. Let's actually do the tail first. Let's do the tail first. So to get that aquamarine color, like what I did with the fish, I just do blue, layer of blue and green. Literally all, all there is to it. Light layer of blue, light layer of green. And of course I made it complicated here with these beads. I think I'll have to go back in with the white gel pen or the gouache or whatever it is to clean up these beads because they're right now they're just sinking into the tail. And I'm going lighter on this fin so that it'll kind of be lighter than this because this is supposed to be like solid obviously and then this is going to be that slightly translucent color and then I won't add any of the darker green. Better to always go from lightest to darkest so it's not too muddy the colors. See how different the color is when you press Lightly, you just release less pigment. For the skin, I have to do quite a few color mixes. So I'm gonna use this golden brown, which is just an ochre color. It's probably gonna be my main color to use. So I'm doing a little bit of shading as I'm adding these layers. So there's a little bit of the ochre, there's a little bit of yellow, and then there's some pink. I think she's like a cool tone girl or a light or a warm tone. I think she's probably a warm tone, right? Yeah. So the red, you have to be so careful with this because this can really overwhelm your color of the skin. I think she's already a little bit. There's a lot of colors going on. And then we'll do some blushing in a second. Let's just get started. Ah, it's green. No, no green. Not green? Well, I guess she could be if she's a mermaid. Maybe her skin has a little green undertone. Like, no. She spends her time. She loves the sun. She's swimming towards the sun. So she spends her time, like, near the sun. She likes to tan. She's got a tan. <laughs> she's too yellow. Oh well. I think I'll go back over with more brown give her like a little bit more of a sun-kissed thing. Okay, she's too yellow, oh well. It's this ochre color. Should not have used so much of it. Oh well, she will, it'll match her blonde hair. <laughs> so, it's fine. I want, with her shells and stuff, maybe they're gonna be like orange, so like the little, Starfish will be orange and red. Maybe she's like, or maybe she's a redhead. Oh, but see, we can't make her a redhead. Because what if the copyright police come for us? We don't want that. I also really want to make her shell purple. But no. Can't do that. Shell should it should be white, right? It should be white. That's what shells are. 
Is that the color shells are in the world? I think they do have like a purple sheen to them. Let's make it like a pinkish sheen. Not purple. It has nothing to do with that copyrighted color that we're not mentioning. Okay, there we go. I think she's blue eyed. Blonde, blue eyes, makes sense. And I think for the blushing, let's use this warm red again. If you only have watercolor pencils and not watercolor, you can actually do this to um, to try to get to get that watercolor effect. Oh no, that got a little messy, but it's fine. Pretend she has a sunburn. She likes to hang out in the sun too much. I love giving my mermaids freckles. I feel like it makes sense because if they're in the sun all the time, on the beach all the time, they would have freckles, right? If they're fair. Okay, so let's do the blonde hair. like that. <laughs> I'm not a fan of that. Oh my gosh. Um, here I'm just, I'm doing it every which way because I do want the colors to kind of blend and give that natural effect. This is her natural color. It's growing out of her head and it's kind of like lighter in places and darker in places. So as we can see, the paper has buckled. Um, and if that bothers you, maybe don't use watercolor or watercolor pencils or any kind of water medium on this paper. I personally don't mind it too much. As long as it's it doesn't tear up the paper, I'm okay with it. That is that. And I think what I'm going to do is while this is drying, I'm going to just go back on this turtle and do some extra bits. Now I think I'll go in, this is pretty dry, let's go in and finish off this tail. Okay. Still a bit, I think doing those freckles was a mistake, look at that. Yikes. Let's do the very lightest of light browns. I love how the light brown looks like tan I'm saying light brown it's actually dark brown the color but I'm using a very light hand So what I'm using right now is white watercolor paint on this 
small paintbrush and I tried using the white gel pen and this is the white gel pen that I use. It is called the Uniball Signo white gel pen and it's really really good except when it's not. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Sometimes I just feel like it doesn't want to, like the ink just doesn't want to come out. So when it does come out it looks awesome. Sometimes I just don't know what I'm doing wrong with it and it's just not working. Maybe the water, um, maybe the paper is just a little bit too wet for it right now. Um, but I did decide to go with just white watercolor paint and it has a much more subtle effect. It goes on very, very white. As you can see, as I'm just putting it on, it looks like like a white gel pen. It looks very stark. But when you wait a little bit and let it dry down, it actually becomes a much more subtle color. It just becomes this, it blends in a little bit better with the image. So that is it. This is um, where I'm going to leave it. This is the finished complete page. This page is called Turtle Sunrise. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed this little color along. Um, like I said, I'm going to be doing these every now and then to color a page within my coloring book. Once I publish more coloring books, I'll be doing those too. I have, like I said, I have one that's called Good Clean Fun, which is um, alternative swearing. Really fun. It's really cute. Um, and then also this one, Mermaid Summer, and then I am working on the Witchy Coloring Book, which you, if you watched some of my other videos, you might have seen I was inking one of the pages. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!